In the 2010s, the World Bank ended its financial support for developing economies' fossil fuel projects, such as coal-fired power stations. That decision was the result of pressure from green campaigns which continue to lobby public institutions, such as universities, to divest from fossil fuels. All companies, banks, institutions and governments immediately halt all investments in fossil fuel exploration and extraction. Green political campaigns have also targeted financial institutions, warning them that their investments could become stranded by climate policies. The UK government has followed this political agenda and has diverted international development and aid funds towards green energy projects. And if we can get those things right, then we can imagine international development, climate and the environment as a single thing. But the consequences of these campaigns and decisions are not felt in the places where they are made. They are felt thousands of miles away where the need for energy and development is urgent. The result of switching emphasis away from the cheapest, most abundant and most reliable forms of energy has been a vast opportunity cost. Western demands for sustainability put limits on economic growth in the developing world that would not have been tolerated anywhere else. In Ghana, Esper's explored ways of making cocoa production more sustainable. The good news is that if you have the right institutions, policies and practices, it empowers poor people to enhance their livelihoods in a way that still sustains the environment. African countries' economic and industrial development has been inhibited by the sustainability agenda that has been imposed on them. To learn more about the consequences of the green agenda for the world's poorest people, visit the GWPF's new Energy Justice website.